Right. Our next two viruses are infectious hepatitis and polio. So let's take infectious hepatitis uh, first. Hepatitis, anything HEPA means liver. So this is going to be a very infectious virus that infects the liver. This one is transmitted through contaminated food or water. Um, if you drink after someone, if you eat after someone, it can be sexually transmitted. Nursing mothers can give it to their babies. Needles, if needles are shared in any form, um, it could be transferred that way. There are three types. There's A, B, and C. C by far is the worst, and it's the one that is actually sexually transmitted. The symptoms are fever, chills, nausea, um, liver involvement, jaundice. Again, you're going to um, have yellow tint to the whites of your eyes, and you get pain in your joints. Because this one is one of the viruses that follows the lysogenic cycle, it can be in your system for years and years and years. And I want to give you a personal experience with this one. I actually have two of them. My dad got hepatitis B um, in surgery. He was actually doing surgery on someone who had hep B. And um, he asked for the scalpel and the surgical nurse gave him the scalpel blade down and it cut through his glove and he got hepatitis B. He was definitely down for a period of time. He had to uh, quit work for a while, um, come home, uh, lay around, be very quiet and still till his liver recuperated. But even after he got over the hepatitis, he still was never able to take anything. He couldn't have an alcoholic drink. He couldn't take anything that was processed through his liver. So nothing over the counter. He couldn't take Benadryl. He couldn't take any sort of ibuprofen or acetaminophen, any of those. Uh, so it did affect him for the rest of his life. Another friend of mine got hep C and didn't know it. She um, and I both lived in San Diego, and she had entered a match for a child in her neighborhood that needed a bone marrow transplant, and she was willing to donate blood marrow, so she entered a match. It came back that she was not a match, so um, fast forward, she moves to Memphis, and that's actually where I, I met her, and she got a call, and it turned up she was a match for a little girl in Seattle, Washington that she, she didn't know, but her blood came up a match. And of course, at that time, they're trying to match markers, you know, those markers on the outside of the cell. So she consented and said absolutely she would uh, consent to the bone marrow transplant. And they sent her, they drew more blood and sent it off to a lab that did further testing. Well, she came back showing antibodies for hep C. Well, hep C is sexually transmitted, and she had not been with anybody else but her husband. So now they get to look at her husband. As it turns out, he... Um, was a pilot and I think had had affairs in every single town he ever landed in because there was multiples and uh, it just it it got to be huge I mean obviously uh, they went through a divorce I went to court with her and just hearing that everybody he had been with their children and and of course this had been years and years so he had to go back 20 30 years well 20 over 20 years the people that he had been with and he had they had to have their children tested they had to have their partners tested it was just a it was a huge mess needless to say they're not married anymore but she never did have full-blown symptoms where she really you know it she never got jaundiced so the doctor told her she must have at some point thought she had the flu or had a, a mild case of it and um, that didn't signal her to go in and get any, um, any further testing. So, um, 
watch out hepatitis. It's it's a a very very infectious disease. Um, another friend got infectious hepatitis through a blood transfusion when he was twelve, and I may have told you before, but they did not test for these things when he was 12 years old. We only started testing for HIV like in the 1980s. So a lot of bloodborne diseases weren't tested in blood and he received a transfusion for a bleeding ulcer. And as it turns out, he contracted hepatitis at 12, but it did not show up. Symptoms didn't show up until he was 48 years old. So at 48, he started looking yellow in the whites of his eyes. And then it obviously moved at that point from the lysogenic cycle into the lytic cycle. Well, you can imagine, you know, in those 30 some odd years, how many viral hepatitis, he, you know, uh, babies he had that just kept being replicated and replicated and replicated before they all entered the lytic cycle and made him sick. As it turned out, um, it was devastating because he was a candidate for a liver transplant. And even though he got the transplant, he rejected it and he died a couple of years later. So I know I've harped on this a million times, but please, please, please do not drink and eat after people. You just really do not know uh, what they have contracted or where they have been or who they've been around or who they've drank or eaten after. And it's just it's just not a good practice. All right, polio. <clears throat> polio was very, very serious, is still a very, very serious virus, and it does have a, a vaccine. You get polio from contaminated food or water. The most famous that you may know is FDR. Uh, President Roosevelt used to swim every single morning in a lake that was close to his home, and they uh, think that that's where he picked it up. He had a medium case, and he was paralyzed from the waist down. He always had to be in a wheelchair. But sometimes polio manifested itself in children and actually paralyzed their diaphragm, and they couldn't breathe. You have to have your diaphragm in order to breathe, because when you take a breath, your diaphragm pushes down and allows air in. It's the atmospheric pressure between the outside and the pressure in the chest cavity. So we have to have our diaphragm. Well, these kids were having to be put in what was called an iron lung. And the iron lung actually was pressurized and breathed for them. Jonas Salk came along. Unfortunately, we can't watch the virus video that I have. You would see him because he has the Salk Institute in California. But he came up with a vaccine and actually tested the vaccine on himself and his family. It, it worked, and it completely uh, eradicated polio. Polio was given, the vaccine was given to me when I was a young girl on a sugar cube. We lined up at school, and they put a couple drops of the vaccine on a sugar cube, and that's how we got it. But obviously, it's been, um, it's progressed. That vaccine has progressed since that time. I would like for you to look up polio. I know that you have got four of these viruses, and I would like for you to look up polio, and I want you to go and look at some of the YouTube videos on the Iron Lung. Write me a paragraph on somebody, a paragraph or two actually, on someone that is still maybe in an Iron Lung and um, do this in your own words. Give me a little bit of their background, how they're doing, uh, what the challenges are, and what they have to go through. Okay, um, we will pick up with your next two on our next recording.